He's shooting, okay. We don't well, see action. Uh, that's why I, I speak of humanity's master code, because Claire Graves' research and theory building led us to a capacity to, in a sense, adapt to any situation, any culture on the planet Earth, to help prescribe for them what's appropriate to them for them to have a healthy system. Not, not a car wash, not a one size fits all. And, and so the master code is like the master, <clears throat> is like the master key. <clears throat> so I, I should have trained you the time mark, monk, when you came back to the States for you to understand the options and to know how to pick those for different people on the planet. Not, not the same system, but so, the, the appropriate system for them, for their people, their, their environment, their ecology, uh, their human capacities, their weather conditions, and all those things. That's what the Claire Graves model is. So it's not yet another theory. It's a master theory. So this master code, so if you were to speak to me about a collective who've come from the future to work to create transition and to catalyze change now, we're coming with a language that's different from what's perhaps able to be heard right now. So this master code can work as a translation. That's exactly what it is. And <clears throat> How should who lead whom to do what with which people living where? Which means that you couldn't come with a unitary system that you'd have to do vital signs monitor in order to detect globally the distribution of different mindsets and worldviews that have naturally emerged on the planet Earth so that you can speak to Earthlings about healthy versions of their systems. How do you train? How do you train? How, how, how do you select people first who do that? It's, it's virtually not a trainable system at first, but you have to find the minds that have the preset genetics, DNA, experiences, worldviews that are capable. You, you can't just assume that a human can. Some humans can, some. So we always have to have the word some. So I, I, I would never say Republicans are, some Republicans are. Blacks are, some blacks are. See, it forces that ability to differentiate as opposed to assume that there is a glob of people in a stereotype group who can be trained, developed, whatever it happens to be. So it's, it's always looking for that individuality, that uniqueness. Uh, so whenever I started working in South Africa, that's what I did. That's why it took me 65 trips. I was all over the place. I was doing vital signs monitors in the nine provinces. So how, how do you, so vital signs monitoring, what, what, do, what does that mean technologically? Okay. Uh, uh, for example, I, I talked to the, the two guys, Cyril Ramaphosa and Rolf Mayer, who, who led the Constitution Convention in South Africa. And they said, well, Don, should we be a unitary system, a confederal system, or a federal system? I said, yes. Because all of these are present in the first, second, third world pre-modern, modern, postmodern post distribution of humans in what's called South Africa as a microcosm of the planet. So let me show you how you can do that, realizing that what you're doing is the same thing for the diversity of the human planet because of your microcosm nature. So I was, I was trying to teach how to avoid the fallacies that we have, in, particularly in, in the West, so one size fits all. So here is, a, here is the code, not the prescription, but the way to decide what to do. When you, you factor in certain uh, conditions and capabilities that tells you what system that you need, rather than you impose from a unitary theory point of view what you want. 
Uh, it's a whole difference. Do you, do you think there's an underlying intelligence at play in this? That's, so you say it's about selecting and understanding who yeah. has the capacity. Do you think there's an underlying intelligence at play right now? But now it's, it's not a mystical kind of woo-woo. It's a functional. When you have these ingredients, human, human nature, human nature tells us how to lead, how to impact, how to motivate, how to d design jobs for, based on the mix of those ingredients that naturally produce. But I'm, I'm, I'm not a woo-woo guy now. I'm a very practical, solve problems. And then when you solve those, you're gonna create new ones. So there's a never ending quest and we're never going to get it together because once we had, we've changed it. Hmm. So you've been doing this work for now several decades. Oh, I, uh, probably 40 years. And do you feel our, that we're at a, a shift point? Oh, now? no question about it. No question. And Claire Graves and his theory building identified this particular place that would happen if we didn't blow ourselves up. Uh, and that we need to get ready for it. It's, it's all in his theory, emergent cyclical double helix model of biopsychosocial systems development. He was the first to combine the biology, the brain, the psychology, the sociology, all together. I mean, he was a re remarkable, non-ego, non, non uh, he had trouble getting his stuff published at the American Psychological Association. A very normal kind of guy, but a genius. And nature does that to us. But we better be prepared to listen, or we'll, we'll miss the whole impact of it, and we'll doom ourselves to less than what we could be and should be. Do uh, we miss it, or is it that we're not ready for it? Well, we're, we... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Claire uh, Grace used to say, he's an old style professor, you know, that, that kind of thing. Maybe you encountered in West Virginia somewhere. <coughs> uh, he said, now Don, my problem is, how can I explain a system to people who based on who they are, won't get it? So that's when we worked out the 10 conditions for change, to know when to hold them, when to fold them and when to walk away and when to run like hell. That's four. Well, that's all. Okay, you said 10. Uh, no, uh, no, no, it's uh, the list of 10 where, where you track their evolutionary levels and state of readiness. Otherwise, you're, you're trying to force people in deep sea diving and cause them to get the bends. Mm -hmm. That's why we have to be careful about what we, are, what we promise, promise people. Yet, at, at the same time, the evidence, everything I, I say is based on academic research. I mean, serious brain research. Most of the world hadn't figured that out because they think that they've dis dis discovered something new. They haven't. But it's, it's a problem that, that any guy like me has. I mean, why should anyone from Texas who loves Yankee football, <laughs> who would trust me? And so I, I have the problem of applying what I'm teaching, but because I'm, I'm a bit different, shall we say. I'm an outlier. But I was privileged with my academic research and PhD programs at University of Oklahoma and other places to encounter a, a unique group of people. Uh, from Oklahoma, yeah. I got a Musifer Sheriff, Institute of Group Relations, University of Oklahoma. The autonetic experiment of, of judgment. And he was a Turkish guy. And his wife was English. And he was a founder of social psychology. The founder of? The field of social psychology. Social psychology. That blends psychology and sociology. My PhD program 
was a, an, all, an all major. I could pick and choose my courses from the entire curriculum and doing my PhD, which I did gladly. The, the spiral dynamics, if you were to look at where it's emerging from the spiral, where, where would it be emerging? Well, the manifestation of the spiral is global. It's, it's everywhere. Uh, because the, uh, because if, if I have the planet Earth and I can monitor all the different thinking patterns and paradigms and all that. But how do you monitor the whole planet? Oh, we have testing systems. You, you, you'd be amazed at what we can do with our vital signs monitors. And what are they, what are they monitoring? What are, what, uh, this is not a one-on-one -on -one kind of monitoring. This is a, a global That's right. monitoring. We, we are picking up on, on the major evolutionary systems and their transition points and the nature of their conflict. We're scanning them. And scanning them, I mean, this is individuals looking no, at situations? Well, we, we, we tend to study groups because that, that's, that's our interest. So we just did a major project in Iceland where even before the Iceland crash, we were profiling Icelanders because, you know, there are only 300,000 of them because we were working for the Iceland leadership to figure out what, what should Iceland be uh, and, then, and then when the financial crisis hit, we went back in with our instruments to measure the impact it was having on Iceland. And, and then we uh, de designed a series of, of Iceland-based assessment processes and strategies based on our research. And we, we had meetings of cross-section of Icelanders uh, for them to comment what the question, who, what should Iceland be now? And then we did it for the government to, to decide on what governmental system should, an economic system should Iceland have. And so we caught Iceland before their crisis, even went in to warn the prime ministers that they were about to have it, and, and, and then track right after the crisis and meltdown. And then two more times using Gallup, sophisticated research, technology in order to form a, ver a, a vision of Icelanders as they interacted with their volcanoes. Hmm. Hmm. All this is possible today, but you, you got to have a, a framework that helps you explain because all this kind, all kind of research going on. My goodness, we're being studied to death, hmm. but without a knowledge of the framework of the processes uh, then it's, it's a waste of time. I, I want to ask you a question about community. I live in, in an intentional community. I understand. And we, our founder died three years ago. So now we're a community that's in transition. And the major questions that are coming up are around leadership. How would you, how would you triage a situation like that? Well, first I, I would identify the conflicting worldviews that because they were all connected to the owner, I mean to the, the founder, but he's, he's gone, gone. And so they were set adrift without guidance. And of course, then I'd say, why were you like that? And why are you now having trouble? What have you not been able to do in terms of what's next for you? And, and so I'm sure it's a turbulent time, but it's at these junctions that learning occurs, that new theories are built. And so even in, in my country, you know, think about presidential elections, Donald Trump, thank God for them, because we get to see systems bash against other systems. Mm -hmm. So I have for years, when I was at the University of North Texas, had faculty grants to study presidential campaigns where I would track the, the, the population in August and the same population right before they voted in November to watch the shifts. I, I did the, the study of, of Humphrey Nixon and George Wallace particularly mm. Mm. with my semantic differential and other tools in order to see what happens to people during a campaign like right now. 
why is there so much polarization? Mm -hmm. But we can track that now and we can prevent it. So my job, South Africa was to stop a civil war and I did it. Now, South Africans did it, but I prepared them over those 65 trips. How, how did you build the, the sense of trust in the work that you were doing? Oh, all kind of mechanisms. One, I figured out that uh, Afrikaners were influenced either by relig religion or rugby. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, ah, since I work with, with uh, Tom Landry and Bob Phillips of the Saints and uh, NFL pro team, I didn't know anything about rugby but I knew about high performance teams. And, and so I got to the coach of the Springbok, a guy named Christie, a Scottish lad. And we talked and he understood what I was doing. So I, I designed for him the entire motivational strategy of the Springbok team called Six Games to Glory. And then I identified each of the six games that, and by, by uh, winning that six games, they, they beat uh, New Zealand All Blacks in double overtime. And I, I was back in Texas sending, sending kids faxes after every game. Now, now you do this, now you do this, now you do this. So uh, you're uh, telling me it all comes back to football. That's what you're telling me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a, it's, it's a manly sport, you see. You go, <laughs> but you know, I, I, I have operations all over the world about 3,000 people on all, all the continents. It's only a theory, but it's a well-tested theory. And we constantly improve on it and validate it because we knew that we were reaching a, a point that if we couldn't figure these things out because of the distribution of weapons across uh, infantile systems, that we better do something quickly. So I. I, I knew George W. Bush, and when he started running for governor, I used to go to baseball games with he and Laura and tried to talk George into paying attention to me. I couldn't get him to understand. In fact, last time I saw him, he, he said, he said, Beck, we, th we think you're very bright, but we don't know what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I tried Clinton with, with the same kind of thing because he was so concerned about racism. And since I'm working in South Africa with these, a whole culture, I was tainted, they thought. But what the hell? I mean, we got to go where people are. And so over a long period of time, I won the support of not only the white Afrikaans, English speaking, but I'm a Zulu, Butelezi named me Amizi Muti. So I very carefully identified, I was trying to do trust building. And often I'd hear, <laughs> you ain't could go home. To which I'd say, hell, we've been saying that in Texas for years. <laughs> you, you just dodge it. And so the people like me are born by ge genetic ac uh, accidents that have a different way of operating. Claire Graves thought maybe one in 10,000. Or weird ducks. <laughs> I'm a weird duck. Do you have a sense of origin beyond this, this particular terrestrial world? Oh, no, I'm not, I'm not at all that, that mystical. No, 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 not, not me. I'm a very practical linebacker, remember? That, that I'm, 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 I'm driven by deep religious motivation systems and parents who were lovely people. So they, they get all the credit and Claire Gray's intelligence and ability to articulate. Even the American Psychological Association wouldn't publish his works until his janitor found out about it. And his first publication was the Harvard Business Review because we had to go to the practical business with bottom lines to get attention because the psychology profession was so tainted and narrow hmm. in its egalitarian humanistic systems that couldn't hear it. I still can't hear it for the most part. I was at MIT the other day and they're still laboring to understand. 
Do you, do you see the possibility of non-linear leaps in consciousness? Oh, that's what they are. That, that, yeah, that, that's exactly what they are. They're, they're, because all of a sudden, in the way that change happens, everything stops working, like today. Now, whenever we d design uh, political systems or even military systems, we tend to be preparing to fight the last war over again. You probably heard that term. Well, that's what we've done with our two parties. They're both antiquated. Mm -hmm. They're both out of sync. And so I went to 10 Downing Street with Blair's people to try to understand the so-called third way politically. And the versions of it I, I'm seeing today, were, uh, it's called no, no Labels Movement and other movements are struggling with trying to figure out what it might be. It's simple what it might be, in my view. It's a combination of systems tailor-made for each of the applications. So left brain and right brain are not opposites. But who's designing that system? Who's well, we are. So it's, it's, who's the we? Well, my, my group. I mean, we aren't special people. We're psychologists and coaches and, and educators and cons consultants. And of course, I, I work with Mimicine Foundation, you know, Mar Mary Ann, and because they're in Dallas and they called me one day, said, we hear that you have something unique. I, I don't do marketing. Uh, so I'm discovered, in a sense, when things get bad enough. That's why I'm here. Where are we going to be in five years? What, what do you see happening over the next five years? We're going to go through a turbulent period. See, once again, my PhD study was the 1860 election of Abraham Lincoln, because I, I wanted to figure out how we got into the Civil War. What, what were the dynamics around unionism? and slavery that were, that were not amenable to compromise. So I, I studied systems to see when they reached the stage of unable to, to see a compromise position. And then both sides then are, are driven to kill the other. That's a critical point that society has reached often because we didn't know what to do. But now the weapons that both sides can have are so scary that we could no longer do. So I've been at, at the UN several times trying to explain at the UN. And some people who are here uh, are remarkable and opening doors for us. When things get bad enough, a crisis point is reached, but there's no guarantee that humans can respond. So we may go back to a new dark ages. So my struggle in the rest of my life is to avoid that decision point and be prepared to deal with it. So what's the alternative to going to war with one another? If you see that in, in the cyclical nature of humanity, that's the point we keep coming to. Well, there, there, there are substitute versions of the conflicts. Um, here, here we are in uh, Great Britain and London as we're watching the British side uh, of soccer, you know, defeat uh, the Aust Australians for the first time. In the past time, they would have been a war. Mm -hmm. Now, the conflict is over. The uh, play. Sports. I know you don't like to hear that. No, but, it, but it, it's... Yeah, thank God for it. And our elections are ways, you see, for systems to bash up against each other. It's kind of gotten out of hand this year with uh, Donald Trump and guys, but he, he, he's, uh, he's the kind of person that appears at just this time. And our dumb leadership in America couldn't appreciate it, couldn't deal with it. They got so threatened. So now the Repu Republican Party is demolished. Hmm. That's a good thing. Hmm. The same thing is going to happen to the social democrats. So here I have traditional re re republicanism, and here in UK it's the conservative party, and here I have progressive, in my country it's the social democrats of 
Obama and Hillary and that group and these two systems. What they don't understand that they are part of the same system because if the traditional system fails, the progressive system will fail because of their interdependency. But we have a political system that at the point when they need to begin to cooperate, we have an election system that causes them to divide. It's a systemic problem and it could be fatal. So the duality of democracy in this case is not a functional, is not a functional system for... It, it should be, because it takes the conservatives to educate the children and maintain the buildings and run that wonderful restaurant in London called Rules. Have you ever been there? It's, it's very much a throwback to traditional Britishness. It's, it's very staunchy, hmm. staunchy, but it needs to be. So children have to pass through the discipline as does the entire culture has to maintain the traditional system. They make possible the advancement into progressive systems. And if you wipe these out, this system is going to fold. We haven't learned about the interdependency. Someday we will. So, so what, what's your point of view then about, for example, the eco-village movement, where these societies are being set up outside of the parameters of the existing governments and, and social systems? Well, I, because the, they are transitional elements. I work with the, the transition movement here in the UK, in southern, down in so, southern UK. So, in fact, they use spa dynamics as their primary vehicle. Mm -hmm. And I was, yeah, I was having a, a fun time with them. So nature, naturally, if I use that term, naturally will begin to produce what's necessary for the future. But if we're dumb enough to kill it off, as we are, for, so that the traditional systems can maintain their power, mm -hmm. then we're dooming ourselves. And that's why society goes through these periods of tranquility and then violence, and, and, then, tranquil, and, and then violence well, because of our weapons today, beyond bows and arrows, that violence thing is intolerable. We can't play that game much longer. Now, I'm not a missionary. I'm just an academic professor type who loves Yankee football. But I, I've seen these things with Claire Dr. Gray's research. So I, I've been privileged. He's a very ordinary kind of guy. Yet, his, his dad was a veterinarian, so he, he studied horse brains, you know, f for years. And he was really the first of the, of the psychologists to get into brain research, hmm. the first, with his biopsychosocial systems. So it's, it's simply a way to see how society itself is leading us not some kind of gurus doing it. The natural processes of combination of, of systems produces decision points. And if we can read them and see what they're pointing at, we're going to save our souls. I have a question. Under, underlying all of this, where does the ethos of complete transparency and honesty between individuals come in? That, that is one of the trademarks of a very advanced system, but it's, it's not necessary that we don't have to be that pure uh, because human nature is still human nature, yet there can be improvement in it. Uh, and with that kind of improvement, small steps that we almost uh, like, you understand about lighting, almost like a light beginning to show, but but is, is the system that we're in today, the twilight, is it before dark or before dawn? If before dark, then we're headed for a long, dark period. If the twilight is before dawn, it means it's the growing of a whole new system, and that's what you're interested in. And your way of talking about time is that, how can we get a brand new system glowing with the light? 
Well, in one sense, it's the luck of the draw because there is no prescription, but there are characteristics of that transition that are clearly in the academic research. Are you optimistic? Of course I am. Why? Because we're still here. In spite of lions and tigers and bears, oh Lord, save us from these. Look what we've been through as a, as a human species. My goodness, those European wars. Ah, it's incredible that we survived this. So there is within humanity a capacity that when awakened allows us to see the broad sunlit uplands and not the darkness and brave nature of violence and war and disease of various kinds. And today for the first time, because we have the internet, we have social media, we're in contact with everybody instantly, for the first time we have the opportunity. Let's, let's not blow it. Thank you. Thank you for sitting down with us. Other than that, I'm not very opinionated. <laughs> <laughs> I've written about it. I mean, I've, I'm, in, I'm in the press all over the world about it. Some, some can understand, as, as Graves says, uh, Claire W. Graves, how can I explain a system which itself predicts the people I'm talking to won't get it? Right. Right. Hmm. Hmm. Is that all right? Is that enough? Yeah. No, I think so. I, I, I can you. say a lot more.